Hey folks, you are tuning into Combat Insider. This is Maureen Renault. Enjoy. Welcome back, Combat Insiders. Joshua Furs here. Uh, we're here with a very special guest. This is part of the uh, MMA Gold uh, series that we've been doing. This is part trace, part three here. And uh, this is Marion, the Belizean Bruiser Renault. And uh, we're so thankful to have you on. And uh, we appreciate your time so very much. How's everything going? Uh, everything's going good so far. I am on vacation now from school, so I woke up this morning and literally had nothing to do but train. I'm like, this feels amazing. This is what that feels like. <laughs> so I guess Christmas vacation, right? The whole Christmas vacation. You guys get like two weeks or just a week? Uh, not enough time. <laughs> not enough time. That's always the answer. Not enough time. That's what. Whenever someone asks me, hey, how was your vacation? It was not long enough. Uh it's never long enough. So speaking about training, uh, real quick, I'd like to go to uh, you know your fight with uh, uh, Yana Kuniskaya that's coming up. You guys were supposed to be on the January card, right, uh, 233, and obviously that got canceled. Uh, I guess talk to us. Uh, we know we got rescheduled to the, the ESPN Plus 4 card in March. Um, I guess talk to us about the moment. When did you find out that the card was canceled and that everything was getting shuffled around? I think it was last Wednesday. I was getting ready to go into another training session, and yeah. Dave called me. And when Dave calls you, it's either really good news or really. not really good news. Right, and right. so as soon as he answered, I said, talk to me, tell me something good. Yeah. And he's like, well, I got bad news. I was like, no, you don't. No, you don't. Stop talking. <laughs> Tell me some good news. Um, I actually thought the cap, the uh, fight was canceled. Mm. But, you know, altogether canceled. But it wasn't. Um, and we were able to reschedule it. So I look at it as a positive. Okay, no worry. I still get to train. My weight cut will be a lot easier. Um, I get to work on a couple more things that I want to fine tune. Um, so I kind of look at it as a positive. You know, it just it seems like a really long camp. I just have to train smarter now and not rush things. It, that kind of leads me to my next question. So like you said, you were probably in the middle of camp already. Does it kind of um, – my next question was going to be, did you kind of – do you pump the brakes on the camp for a little bit and kind of, you know, like you said, kind of slow down because the fight's getting pushed back almost almost two months. It's the beginning of March, right, I believe. Do you pump the brakes, or do you say, like you said, do you just just keep the camp going and just, like you said, fine tune everything? Well, when people say camp, it's like they all of a sudden started training. But I train right. year round. I I don't stop training. Right. When we say camp, it just means that we get more structured and more strict on our diet right. and the timing of right. Right. our workouts. Right. So, you know, my eating is not as strict as it would be but it's yeah. still at where it's at so i can maintain i don't like to cut lots and lots of weight um the structure and the intensity of my workouts they're more about timing getting my timing on um right. so it's not as intense as it would be as we're getting closer to a fight so i still keep up with everything that i'm doing I might not do as much. Like I was sprinting four to five times out of the week. I'm not doing that anymore. I got to kind of backtrack so I don't overtrain myself. Yeah, I was looking too, and a lot of people, uh, I noticed like maybe half the card got rescheduled. The other half I haven't heard news about yet. I know a lot of people just straight up got their fight canceled, and I'm sure they're working on it, you know, but um, uh, definitely glad to hear that. You know, it got rescheduled, and it got rescheduled quick, and you weren't, like, in, like, a waiting limbo game of, is it still going to happen, is it not going to happen, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know. Leonard does his best to, to make sure he's accommodating. He knows how busy my schedule is. Yeah. Also, being a newly gym owner, working full-time as a teacher, and training full-time. So, he he uh, he was very accommodating. So, I'm glad it was it was when it was supposed to be. You know, it's not when it was supposed to be, but at least it's something, Yes. You know, I as I did more research into you, uh, I I was amazed, absolutely amazed at all the stuff you do. Like you said, you're full time teacher, 
you're in the photography. I saw that you even did like you do like some public speaking. You train. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, where do you have? I, I I barely. I swear, I barely have enough time with you know working a normal job and they kind of you know maybe like doing this stuff. Like I feel like I'm cramming. Plus you know a family and stuff like that. Where do you find the time and the the time management skills? Please share it with the world because I need I need those time management skills. I think I learned time management skills when I was in college. Yeah. I was a head athlete. I worked and I took 18 plus units and I was on scholarship. Yeah. You know, I wanted to use that scholarship to get two degrees. So I learned my time management skills in college. Yeah. Now, who knew that I would need that later on in life? I get asked that question almost daily. How in the world do you do it? I honestly don't know, but I am very structured with my schedule I make time so if it's important to me I will make time I will find the time to make time even for friends and family you know get together it's like yeah. okay can you get together I'm like okay but after this time I'll have this much time for you and I know that's hard but it's just what I have to do right now yeah. and it's all with it I'm 100% passionate about everything that I do I love my photography yeah. I love my gym I love the camaraderie and the family atmosphere that we've created at the gym. And we've been able to bring in a lot of people in a very short time. Um, I do love my job. It's, I don't even feel like it's a job. Um, I am trying to go part-time, though, in the teaching. Hopefully, um, I'll be able to do that next year so that way I can focus part-time job as a teacher and a part-time gym owner. So um, I'm trying to find ways. But honestly, if I want it to happen, I will make time to make it happen. Yeah, that, I, that's a great answer, man. I I, I think it's hard. Uh, it is hard for, you know, I, I, I guess for me, and I understand exactly what you're saying as far as like blocking off time, say for family and friends and stuff like that. I, I almost feel like, okay, um, you know, my buddy, Matt, sorry, buddy, you get... I, you got 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, we, we have 20 minutes for lunch, but I got to go back and do this, but you, yeah. it's, it's necessary. You're right. Like it's absolutely necessary in order to. And they understand 100%. In yeah. fact, um, at my last women's jujitsu class, they got me a huge basket full of tons of things I like. So I'm easy yeah. to please yeah. it's either a coffee mug, really thick socks to keep my feet warm yeah. or something that makes me smell good or the house smell good. And they loaded it, so it was uh, it was like appreciative because they understand how much I actually do, and so they understand when I can't, you know, spend time with them. But um, and they don't give me too much of a hard time because they know that if if they are in need of me, I will be there. So I I guess my next question, and for people that you know might not know, um, obviously you're you know you're a top. Uh, uh, you're number six in the bantamweight division. You know, uh, explain to us with everything that you said you go through, like your full time teacher and all this stuff, and you know, you got a degree. What made you? I guess what developed your passion? You know, for MMA and and wanting to. I always joke around and say wanting to punch people in the face for a living. You know what? What really developed that passion for you? Well, I was punching people in the face, not for a living, in school. So you were doing it <laughs> for lot. free. You were doing it for uh, free. <laughs> I was like, I need to get paid for this. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I think my first fight was in kindergarten. Mm. And every year after that, I was just, I was a little scrapper. High school was probably the worst. Um, mm. I was bullied a lot. Mm. And when I decided to stand up for myself, um, I decided to take out every single bully that bullied me. And I, I could have went home and cried or I could have took care of it like my mom told me to and exactly yeah. what I did. So it was I've always been interested in boxing. Mm -hmm. And um, for a very long time, I was a single mom and it was a struggle. Even being a teacher, I was still struggling. I was living basically paycheck to paycheck and teachers only get paid once a month. We don't get yeah. paid uh, biweekly. We get paid once a month. Yeah. So I was struggling. I was starving to feed myself. I was starving to make sure my son had food, and then whatever was left over, I would eat. That's how bad it was. And so when I saw the fight between Gina, Gina Carano and Chris Cyborg, I looked at that, and it was the first time I've ever seen MMA fights, literally the first time. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, there's women in the cage fighting, and they're getting paid. 
I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to, I want to figure out how and what I can do. So I went on a search. Um, I talked to a lot of people. Um, I started boxing with um, one of my uh, old administrators. She taught me the foundation, the fundamentals, and it just kind of it blossomed from there. Um, I started working on my ground game, started working on my stand up, started working on my tie. Um, and it just kind of, it was a trickling effect. It was like, it was meant to be because everything that I've done in the past yeah. has now helped me with my own business in the future. Wow. What well, Cyborg, you, you brought up <laughs> Cyborg. Cyborg versus Nunes. Who do you got and why? Oh, I'm going for Chris. <laughs> Chris is my friend, and she is a beast. She's a monster. Of course, anything yeah. can happen, but I truly believe in her skills. I believe in her power. I believe in her camp. Her camp is amazing. They break the yeah. way they break things down. In fact, I learned a lot training with her. I learned a lot about how to control my camp. Um, yeah. I was all over the place. I had no clue, and just that wisdom she gave me helped me tremendously. Wow. So... Let's. I guess let's fast forward and talk about uh, you know your fight coming up with uh, you know with Yana. What do you think? Well, obviously, I don't want you to give away your game plan, but you know, what do you think your strengths are, uh, and how do you think you stack up to her? I think uh, I think our sh my my strength obviously is is the ground game, um, but I feel like I'm an all around fighter. I don't mm. just focus one area and stick there and i think for this fight camp that is it's pretty much what we're working on every aspect of the game we're not leaving anything um we're not leaving anything out we're not leaving any stone unturned not to look past her but uh you know so you get the w where do you think you go from there where do you think that puts you uh in the ranking situation i, I kind of don't even worry about that um just because sure. i am focused i never sure. jump ahead and, and i get asked that question a lot and in all honesty, I never look past my opponent. I never look ahead. I think that's a kind of bad karma, kind of bad juju. Um, plus, it's just um, I don't I don't really look at my stats. Sure. I'm not focused on that. I'm just focused on what I need to do and how I need to get it done. And no, I, every every fight is more important than the last fight. So obviously, this this is a pretty darn important fight. Absolutely, fair enough. Uh, something you love, something you hate. Um, I love my dog. <laughs> You've probably seen all kinds of pictures. In fact, she's right here. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I love my animals. I, yeah. if I could have a house full of animals, my husband, if he would let me, I would have this whole entire house full of straight <laughs> animals. Yeah. It wouldn't smell too good, but I would. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have, uh, I, we have two dogs. We, the, the one thing I can't stay, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just because we love animals too, and uh, you know both our dogs are rescue rescue dogs. But we always joke around, you know, they shed so much, and there's hair all over the house, and we can literally vacuum twenty four seven, and there's hair, right? It, it's okay. just. What kind of dogs do you have? Well, they're both they're both mixes of stuff. The we got the dogs the. Uh, Okay, so the one, he's a uh, Great Pyrenees Lab Mix is what they told us. So he's a big boy. He's about 100 pounds. But he's like, he's real, he's tall, but he's lean. So, but he's really, really, he's got really long fur. And he's he's the worst one. Uh, the other one is, um, she's a pit bull, pit bull Sharpe mix. And she's like a brindle color. So she looks, she has the body of like a Sharpe. And she's got like the scrunchy face of a Sharpe. But then she's got the the nose and the forehead of a pit bull and she's she sheds too but um yeah that's just the one thing man it's just we, we decided like you know hopefully many years from now once they're not here you know i love them to death but if we get dogs again after that it's they're going to be like you know shedless <laughs> dogs because it's just absolutely <laughs> but i didn't mean to cut you off i, I just <laughs> when you talk to aspen man she she brushes hers every single day and it's like a pile of hair yeah um she takes pictures of them like dang girl you are dedicated but that's yeah. that's another one who loves her animals i think that's why we get along so well yeah. <laughs> we like animals more than people i yes i will agree to that 1000 percent. i i will <laughs> i will probably 
I would save an animal out of a burning building before a person. I know that sounds terrible, but I prob I probably would. Honest to God, honest to yeah. God, something you hate. Cold, extreme cold weather. That is why all my girls got me socks because my feet go completely numb, white, numb. <laughs> I just can't stand cold weather. I just need it kind of neutral, not too hot, not too cold, especially not too cold. Don't like cold weather. Mm. Well, you're on the West Coast, right? You on the West Coast? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I yeah, we we're, I'm on the East Coast, and we just uh, we just had a really really bad snowstorm, so you would hate it. We got 17 inches of snow, mm -mm. and it nope. was uh, it was fun. But uh, so <laughs> where, where can people reach you at on social media? Uh, where can they drop in and say hi and give you a follow? Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, and those are two that I respond to my fans the most. It's under Marion Renault or Belizean Bruiser. I am also on Facebook. Uh, my fan page is run by my husband. Um, I don't really take messages on Facebook only because I get too many dick pics on Facebook. I don't know what the deal is, and I am over it. Y'all can keep your penis to yourself. So we cut off the messages on Facebook, but um, it's been good on Instagram so far. I, you know what? And I, oh my God! You know it's funny. I saw somebody post that. And I, I thought it was a joke, and I couldn't believe that it's a real thing, and it happens frequently. I, I actually thought it was a joke. I said, no, that's not a, like, that's just a joke. That's not, people don't do that. I, <laughs> I wish they didn't do that. I'm like, I never have to see your crooked little penis ever again. I, I swear, if I get one more, I will post him, his face, and his penis, and I'll be like, here you go. He wanted to show everybody. But I had to stop Facebook was really, really bad. I, I would. I'll be honest with you. I mean, well, hopefully that never happens. Please, people, don't send me that. I don't want to <laughs> deal with it. But I, I, I would straight up post it, man. I'd be like, hey, man, if you, you got the nerve to post this and send this to me, you're that bold. Boom. Screenshot. But uh, wow, that's that is absolutely <laughs> absolutely awful. But you know, on to uh, like you said, you got a big fight coming up with Yana Kuniskaya. Uh, it was on two thirty three. It's now moved to the uh, ESPN Plus number four show in March. Um, you know, the whole ESPN deal. I think it's absolutely uh, awesome deal for you guys. I think it's more exposure. I think maybe even you know the Fox the Fox deal. So uh, a lot of exposure for you guys. Couldn't be happier for you. Please go give her a follow. Uh, go check out the MMA Gold stuff too. All the fighters there. Uh, give her a follow. Give her a like. Keep it, keep it nice. Okay, keep it uh, reasonable, and she won't have to put you on blast. So, uh, Marin Renault, we appreciate your time so much. It was a pleasure talking to you, and uh, I, you're definitely an inspiration. You do so much. So uh, you know you're definitely an inspiration to us, and hopefully a, a lot of other people. So if uh, no, for nothing else, time management alone. So for <laughs> for Marin Renault, Joshua Furs, we're Combat Insiders, and we're out. <laughs>